Hello and Happy New Year. Tanya Harris from GodConversations.com here. How was your New Year? I was up at Lake Macquarie, about two hours north of Sydney with a group of friends. A small fireworks display compared to Sydney Harbour, but a great start to 2016. What I want to do today is start a new series called Wising Up, Hearing God's Voice for 2016. We've got a wonderful new year ahead of us and hopefully putting things in place to say, how can I hear God's voice more for 2016? How can I walk with God? And I, I want to look at some commonly asked questions about hearing God's voice. In fact, they're the questions I hear most often as I travel around and the questions I've most asked myself. How do we uh, follow God's purpose for our lives and what about the practicalities of hearing God's voice we've got a whole new year God has great things for us but we also have an active role to play but before I start that I just want to say thank you a big thank you to all my blog readers it's been an awesome 2015 so many good things happened in the life of God conversations I visited personally around 30 churches around the world uh, new countries and so many great testimonies coming out of that. We launched God Conversations for Women, which was exciting. And the funny thing was that we had a lot of attendance on the blog posts for God Conversations for Women, perhaps more than any other, which was interesting. And I gave my first academic presentation as a part of my doctoral studies. And so that's just been a whole new world doing my studies. You know, I have to say the one thing I learned last year about study was I thought I had a, a relatively you know decent level of intelligence when I started it but now I realize I, I know nothing in fact I found myself reading some articles for my doctorate that and I I sat there and I thought I have no idea what they're talking about but we're just so excited to see what God's going to use for this research and how it's going to help churches and leaders and pastors with um, hearing God's voice all around the world. So I encourage you to pray for that. But, but I do say thank you to you for all your support, all your kind words of encouragement. Every time you shared something on Facebook or retweeted a, twi a tweet on Twitter, it's been exciting to see how God is expanding the ministry. And, and again, if you know people who might be blessed by hearing God's voice, by being trained in this way, this year, I encourage you to keep supporting that. So, wising up, hearing God's voice for 2016. We're going to look at a commonly asked question, perhaps the most commonly asked question I receive as I travel. And it's this, what is God saying to me about this particular area? Dot, dot, dot. So whether it's about a job or um, a relationship or some sort of health issue or a money matter, what is God saying about this particular question in my life? And often it happens during church services in ministry time. Someone will come up to me and they'll say, I'm praying about this area of my life. Can you please pray and ask God to see what he's saying? And Nine times out of ten, I think people probably go away disappointed because they don't always get a clear answer. And I've thought about this scenario a lot. And, and what's the wisdom in this situation? And I think this is what's happening. The truth is that God does want to speak about those deeply personal areas of our lives, those big issues. And I think that we need to come to him with those questions. We see it all the way through scripture. He speaks about these areas. We hear testimonies of God speaking into those situations. But sometimes uh, when we face those particular decisions in our own lives, we, we come away and it's difficult to discern God's voice. And Sometimes I think this is what's happening. We almost go along in our spiritual life and then we hit this crossroads decision, this big major choice that we have to make. And that choice is loaded with emotion and with desire and with complexity. And sometimes it's actually difficult, the most difficult time to hear God's voice because we hear what we want to hear. And we often misread the cues because we're so deeply invested in the answer. And, and so we've wait, it's almost like we've waited till the challenge or the crisis or the decision hits. And the truth is that these kinds of conversations with God comes in the context of a relationship that is built over time. Any kind of relationship, intimacy is built over time. It's, it's built over the small things, over the daily conversations. And if I wait until those big conversations 
then often they're more difficult to read. And what I need to do is to build things into my life where I'm hearing God in the smaller things of life, where I'm hearing God when he's convicting me about the, the issues of my heart and my habits and my attitudes and day-to-day -day things. And then when I come to the bigger things, it's much easier to hear God's voice. You know, we talk about human relationships and one of the metaphors that is used is building a bridge and you have to build a strong bridge in order to drive a heavy truck over it. And I think it's the same thing with God. We need to be prepared to hear God in the small things first. It's a bit like a child who's learning maths. He needs to learn his, his 10 times table before he takes on algebra. And we need to do the same thing as well. And this is what is often the fruit of that. This is what I find often happens. In fact, I was chatting about it with a friend recently and she had to make a decision about a new job. But she didn't actually need to pray about it because what had happened is her relationship over time meant that she'd already been hearing God speak about a change coming, a new opportunity. So when the job came, it was a no-brainer. She was almost in sync with God. And, and even in my own life, as I looked back, I, I have actually known about a decision before it's even been presented to me because God has been speaking to me about it and, and preparing me in advance. And I think that's what intimacy does. It, it puts you in sync with God so that when the decision hits, it's much easier to discern his voice. And what that means is for my life is that uh, I set out at the beginning of a new year particularly, and I encourage you to do this, take some time to reflect and, and look at your spiritual life and say, okay, what habits am I putting in place to develop my relationship with God? What daily routines? Uh, who am I hanging out with? What things am I doing to prioritize putting God first? Because the issue is, God, am I prepared to do whatever you say? Whatever you say, even if I don't like it, I'm asking you this question. We, we hear what we want to hear so easily. And so I need to be developing that heart and positioning my heart to be able to hear whatever God says, whenever he wants to, whatever topic. You know, have you ever had that situation where you're asking God a question about one thing? and he keeps speaking to you about something else, and you're trying to get him back to what you want. And I found that what we need to do is let him set the agenda. And as we do that, as we cultivate that relationship, as we put him first, then those decision-making processes become much easier, and then we can hear God's voice clearly about the bigger things in life. So what are you doing for 2016 to prioritize intimacy with God? What things are you putting in place? Uh, what habits are you seeking to develop? How, where's your heart at? Let's position our hearts at the beginning of 2016 to say, God, I want to develop my relationship with you first and foremost. And God, I lay my agendas down for the year. I've got desires, I've got motivations, I've got things I want to see happen, but first and foremost, I want to put you first. And that means, God, whatever you say, whatever you want, at any time you want to say it, it's over to you because I'm listening. Well, that's all for Wising Up today. We're going to look next time at when God doesn't speak. Now, this one's a big one, when God doesn't speak. And I, I'm sure that you'll enjoy some, some thoughts that we have on that. Don't forget, lots of great resources at godconversations.com that will help you also in your relationship and hearing His voice. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.